What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be accessing the user's location. So we're going to be using core location to access location updates. We'll be using Swift UI for our UI and then we'll be using combine to pass data from our object that gets those locations to our, our content view. So with all that said, um, let's go ahead and first take a look at the code in case you don't want to watch this entire video. So let's just take a look at the code real quick of what we're actually going to be writing. I know some of y'all don't want to waste waste any time, but uh, this is going to be the object we're going to be creating. I'm going to be covering why we're doing everything that we're doing here. So we have a device location object. We are accessing our location manager. We're requesting location updates. We're using a couple of different delegate methods to handle some of those updates. And then what we'll be doing is using our publisher to send data over to our content view. So as you can see here, that's essentially what we're going to be covering. So if that's all you're here for, then good. But if you're more interested in understanding how all this works, make sure you stay tuned. All right. So let's start by creating a new file called device location service. First, what we want to do is actually import core location and combine since we're going to be using those two different libraries. And we're going to also make sure that our, our new class is going to conform to observable object so that we can notify Swift UI of any updates in our publishers. All right, so as you can see, we have our publisher, which is going to be called coordinates publisher, and it's going to be able to pass a CL location coordinate 2D through our publisher. And if there are any errors, we can also call a completion that will send an error down that uh, down that publisher. Uh, we are going to actually make this a uh, singleton because we don't really need multiple instances getting the device location because it's all going to essentially be doing the same thing. So that's why I'm making it a singleton. Next, what we want to do is we actually want our class to uh, be a subclass of NS object, and then we're going to make it conform to CL location manager delegate. So we wouldn't be able to conform to CL location manager delegate without it being a subclass of NS object. And since we are subclassing NS object, then that means we need to do an override on the init method, and we need to call super.init. Next, what we want to do is create the location manager, which is the object that's going to be responsible for managing, actually retrieving the location updates. All right, so as you can see here, we have our location manager instance, and we are going to make it a lazy, lazy variable so that we can modify the manager as we create it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of the manager, then we'll eventually return it. But before we return it, we want to do a couple of things to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the desired accuracy of our location manager. Now, there's a bunch of different location accuracies that you can actually pick from. Um, the way that I figure out how to actually implement this, because they are these old Objective-C constants with a nasty little K in front of them, um, the way that I do it is I just remember K and then start typing best, and then you should be able to get uh, autocomplete to pull up the rest. From there, what you could do is you could do command click into it, you jump to definition, and you'll actually be able to see the different ones that you could choose from. Now keep in mind that CL location accuracy is actually a type alias for double. So you could technically just stick some doubles in there. Um, it's all based in meters. So if you wanted to do that, but uh, ideally you're going to choose from one of these. And then there's also this one down here. I was 14, some, 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 something like that. But anyways, we're setting our desired accuracy. The next thing that we want to do is also make sure that we are going to set this object, the device location service, as the delegate to this location manager. And there we go. So we're all set with the delegate. Next, we're able to start implementing some of these delegate methods. The first one is going to handle the location updates. So let's implement that. All right, so the first one that we're going to do is going to be this one. It's did update locations. Now you're going to get an array back of locations. So as opposed to using all those locations, let's just get back the last one and then we'll send that through our pipeline. 
and there we go two lines of code gets it all taken care of we get our location then we simply send the coordinate through our publisher if you are curious about you know combine or something like that check out the video up there uh, next we have a different delegate method that we're going to implement just in case something goes wrong something fails you know we're developers we should know that things break and fail so we need to handle those errors right so let's go ahead and implement the error delegate and there we go so now we're going to access our, our coordinates publisher again and instead of sending a value down our publisher what we're going to do is we're going to actually send a failure this will actually cancel out all subscriptions and they'll complete with an error which at that point we can then do something to handle that error but we're not going to cover that today so before we go any further what i want to do is i want to make sure that we're requesting access to the user's location it's something that you have to ask for on iOS. And before we even do that, we want to make sure that we have the correct um, the correct key inside of our info.plist to ask for that uh, privacy permission. So head over to your info.plist. It's pretty hidden if you're new to Xcode 13. And you go to info, you go over here, you do the plus, and you're gonna look, you're gonna scroll all the way down. You're gonna scroll all the way down until you find privacy dash location something. So privacy dash location when in use uh, usage description and then I'm going to say hook it up with that location homie homie like that put something legit there because it's going to be shown by user, two users all right now that we have that in entered in let's head back over to the device location service and now let's actually get into requesting permission. So let's start by creating a function for that. All right, so as you can see here, we have this request location updates function. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna switch over this authorization status property of the location manager, right? And then we, we really only care about three different use cases either we haven't determined whether we have access or not in which in which case uh the operating system is going to pop up that alert saying hey this app wants to use your location can we do it and they're going to choose something right so that's what this is about and depending on whether you want always or just when in use you're going to choose the correct that like the correct function for that right then you have the when in use and the always case right so you should really never hit this uh, use case if we're requesting one in use, but whatever. Anyways, either we are authorized and what we'll do is we'll start updating location. Now, whether you want to immediately start updating the location, that's totally up to you and your logic, but we're just doing that here. And then the last use case is if we got anything else, in which case we don't have access and we're not authorized to uh, get the user's location. Now we can just break right here. Um, let's take it one step further. Let's create another publisher that will actually handle um, sending some type of uh, value through a publisher so that we can update it in our UI or something like that later so you can see how that would work. So up here at the top, let's go ahead and go to, let's create a new uh, publisher. So I'll create one called denied location access publisher. It'll be a pass through subject and we'll just simply send a void um no need to send any values unless you want to make it actually send the authorization status and you can handle it in the view it's up to you but essentially it's never going to fail um either we're going to get a value down it or we're not and hopefully most cases we won't so essentially what we'll do here is we'll just simply send that void like so and we should be able to do send like this technically i think you're supposed to do it like this but I think they have it set up so that you can just do send like this when it's a void. All right. So now that we have this, there's also the use case that happens when we are changing the authorization status, right? So when we're not determined, we're going to request that access, right? Uh, then what will happen is we'll eventually end up in this state, assuming that they say it's okay to use their location. So what we need to do is we need to monitor that other location manager uh, delegate method and let's go ahead and implement that with very similar logic to here
All right, so we have this location manager did change authorization method. Um, and what we're doing is pretty much the same thing as above. Uh, we're switching on the authorization status. Now, as opposed to accessing the local, uh, the local uh, location manager, right? This, instead of accessing this thing right here, what I usually, usually like to do in delegate methods is use the value that's passed to me. So this is still the same location manager. Um, and I usually like to use the variable that's passed to that method. Anyways, so we have manager, we're switching over that. And we're once again, checking uh, the always uh, and the when in use, use cases when we're authorized and we'll start updating. And then in any other case, because we should have determined, right? We shouldn't ever see a not determined case at this state, right? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we call stop updating, whether we were updating or not, we'll just call stop, make sure that the manager stops. And then we're also gonna send denied location access through that publisher one more time. So that was the implementation. Let's go ahead and jump into the usage, right? So how would we actually use this? Let's head back over to the content view and we're gonna start off by creating a couple of properties here at the top. All right, let's take a look at these real quick. So we have a, we have access to our singleton, the device location service. We have that instance now. Um, we are going to create a set of tokens just so that we can have the syncs because we're once again using combined. We're going to have the syncs be uh, stored inside of this uh, tokens set. And then we have our coordinates. So uh, um, I'm using a tuple here uh, with the variable names lat and lawn, and we're going to give it an initial value of zero, zero. And I like using this because I don't have to import core location to my UI framework. Uh, it's just a lot better in my personal opinion, if you're not working with like map view in this content view, right? So yeah, anyways, we have those variables set up next. Let's go ahead and start observing the different uh, publishers that are provided by our device location service. All right, so this observe coordinate updates function is going to access the coordinate publisher. And we want to make sure that we're receiving on the main thread uh, so, because we are going to be updating UI and stuff like that. In the sync we have for the completion uh, section, we're just going to check if there's an error in there. And then you can go ahead and handle the error, whether you want to show an alert, however you want to do that. I'll leave that to you. Uh, then in the receive value, we get the CL, uh, we get that CL location uh, 2D coordinate, whatever it's called. And then we're going to set our self dot coordinates. That's that tuple up at the top. We're going to set it to this value right here where we have latitude and longitude, right? And then lastly, stored in the funk, stored in the tokens. Let's do uh, something very similar and observe the access denied publisher too. All right, and here we go. So once again, very similar situation, observed location access denied. That's gonna be our denied location access publisher. Uh, once again, receive on that main thread and then go ahead and handle it however you want inside of this sync and store it in the tokens. All right, so with those two functions set up, we're pretty much ready to go. All we need to do is uh, update our UI and have something to show. So I'm gonna actually display the latitude and longitude in some just very simple text views. Um, and then we wanna make sure that we call all the relevant functions. All right, and here we go. So we have a V stack just showing our latitude and longitude. Um, accessing that tuple to display the latitude and long longitude values that are uh, sent here. And then um, when we do have the on appear called, modif the on appear modifier called on our V stack, we're gonna make sure we observe before we actually request location updates. So we'll have both of our publishers and subscriptions set up before we even try to um, request location updates and then um, potentially have any value sent down uh, downstream to our subscriptions. So with all that done, I think we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, here we go. So it pulls up our app. Uh, this is a, this should be a fresh install. And there we go. We immediately get the operating system request to uh, allow 
location access, we do allow while using app. And then as you can see, we are getting location updates. Now, if you don't see these getting updated, just make sure that you go up to uh, like the features, you go to location and then you set it to like city run. This way you could get actual location updates or else it'll just stay fixed on one one set of values. But so that's going to be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, as you can see, accessing the user location, not too crazy hard, just had to set up a class. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Same thing goes for if you have any video recommendations, any topics that you want to cover, make sure you leave them in the description below. Uh, thank you again for your time and go out there and keep coding passionately.